Hello and welcome back to the shack with me, 2E0XSB. Today we're going to be looking at some Nano VNA software called Nano VNA Saber. So stick around and let's have a look. Okay, so due to the bad weather we've been having around here the past couple of weeks, we've had some real strong winds. I've taken my main antenna down to stop it getting damaged. And for the sake of this video, I threw up a knackered old fan dipole, something we could just have a look at. And with the wind still being as it is, it's knackered again. So we're going to be looking at some pretty dodgy sort of SWR meter readings and such. But for the sake of this video, I just want to crack on and show you the software as it is. So let's have a look. Okay, so on opening the software, you'll be greeted with this screen. If it's the first time of you opening, you'll be greeted with a Smith chart up here, a Polar chart down here, and another couple of charts down here. I've just personalised this at the moment, so it's got the VSWR and the impedance on it. First of all, come down to the bottom check that you're on the right compo for your nano VNA and click connect once it's connected it should populate those charts with whatever you've got connected now as I said before I've got to apologize this is an absolutely knackered fan dipole at the moment so the readings are all over the place but for the sake of the video let's just crack on so down at the bottom here, we've got our main sort of uh, management features, which is, let's click on the display settings here, which allows you to put whatever charts you want together in a combination of up to six, which is a big difference to the Nano VNA Sharp software, which basically just has the one on at any time. So literally by clicking on here, scrolling up and down here, there's plenty of different things that you can click on and interrogate but I'm just going to leave mine set at the minute to SWR and impedance also on here you can change the background colors foreground and text colors just literally click on those select your own personal preferences click OK and it will change to whatever you want you can do your return losses as a positive rather than a negative one thing I would strongly say is don't forget to click this show lines because without that all it will actually do is show you the small plot points so by putting show lines on there it will show your actual lines on the graphs so that's just some of the basic settings that you can put in down here there's plenty of others but just for speed i'm just going to leave it set as i've done it before come out of there and I'm now going to go up to the top where we can actually look at our sweep settings. Click on the sweep settings, you can give it a name. So I'm just going to have a quick look at the 40 meter. I'm going to click 40M. But down here in the second box, even, if you click on here, you can choose what bandwidth you're actually wanting to interrogate. So I'm going to click the 40 there. You can set your number of measurements to average. So I'm going to do an averaged sweep so it'll sweep it a few times well three times and come up with the average readings so set the band sweep and that will change the settings up here and click on sweep and once that's hit 100 you'll get your new readings so that's improved the charts itself and it's showing you the SWR there for the 40 meter band so as I said that's not good whatsoever but if you could see the elements on the fan dipole at the moment the well basically look like birds nests <laughs> so by basically setting your markers on different points of your graph you'll get all the readings there and set a second marker click on that Put that where you want wanting to find out your information and same again just keep clicking first then clicking them on that way you can literally look at all the important information for each one of those markers as it lays another great thing is down at the bottom here you can click on analysis and you can choose different analysis types so that 
is showing that you can choose a low band pass, band pass, high band pass, and such and such. Click on the VSWR. It's looking for the limit of 1.5. Run that analysis. And as it's saying, there's no areas found below 1.5. Showing you that that is not the best at all. Okay, just so that I can show you that a little easier, I'll just reset that back to the original. Click on Analysis. Click on SWR. Run Analysis. And as you can see, it's picked up three dips that are below 1.5. And it will show you a low spot at 21.9, a start, and an end just above seven meters and so on and so forth so it does actually help you as a quick reference to see what parts of your antennas are resonant you can also through this software do your calibrations as you would just standard on your vna itself so that is another way of just getting it so that the software is speaking to the vna in a more calibrated manner and last but not least you can even save images of your graphs you can reset them frequency axis automatic or fixed so on and so forth I'm on linear at the moment you can put them on logarithmic if you're doing DB work things like that so a very versatile piece of software the only thing with it is it does tell you in multiple places that it is not held to any sort of warranty. This is just an open source shareware type thing. So it's out there for anyone to download, have a play with. And personally, I think it's, it's a lot better than the Nano VNA Sharp. Okay, so in conclusion, in my mind, Nano VNA Saver is a lot better piece of software than the Nano VNA Sharp, which is the official software for the Nano VNA. It works so much better, you, you can interrogate your graphs so much more closely. With the fact that you can get six graphs on the screen at any one point, you can see exactly what's going on at any time or for different sorts of readings. Makes it a lot more user friendly. Um, I'll leave a link in the description below to the website that I got that from. It seems to be very stable. The only problem I have with it really is that it is shareware and it's not really regulated as well as the official software. Uh, one last thing, I'd like to thank Kev, M0KKM, for manufacturing my little Nano VNA, saver, uh, Nano VNA case there. I don't know if you can see that any good, but an absolutely brilliant job and saved me 15 quid off the internet. So thank you very much for manufacturing that for me, Kev. Um, so, until my next video, it's good night from me, 2E0XSB. If you've liked anything in this video, please do leave a like or possibly even a subscribe, it's most appreciated.